Uh, speaking of Ben Simmons, <laughs> as you mentioned him a couple times already, give me the goods, Hudrick. I know you basketball insiders are holding out on all of us. What's going to happen here? And first, like, just let, let's just get this out of the way. Why is why is today? Why is Wednesday, December fifteenth, such a big deal in the eyes of the trades going on in the NBA? Right. So the long and short of it is, on December fifteenth, players that were signed this past off season are now eligible to be traded. Mm. The reason why that's significant is I don't know the exact numbers. I think Bobby Marks from ESPN might have had it. Like 60% of the league was available to be traded before December 15th. After December 15th, it's like 80% of the league. Okay. So yeah, yeah, yeah. basically, you're just throwing way more players in the pool. Now, those players maybe aren't necessarily guys that are going to be available for Ben Simmons or that you'd want in a Ben Simmons trade. But when you're talking NBA and you're talking matching salaries and you're talking all these moving parts, in this Rubik, this Rubik's cube from hell that is the NBA CBA, um, you know, it, it just makes the pool larger and it makes it easier to get a little bit more creative. Um, uh, I know Woj had mentioned, you know, the possibility of three and four team trades. I think that's very, given Daryl Morey's history, mm-hmm. the guy who's, who orchestrated the most complicated trade in NBA history, simply to get Robert Covington to play center for him um, when he was <laughs> in Houston. Like, I would not be surprised if this winds up being it's not going to be one for one. Like it's mm-hmm. not going to, it's just not, I can't imagine a scenario where that happens. This is going to be a complicated trade. There's going to be multiple moving parts who they get in return. I have no clue, but I think it's going to be a very complicated trade and it being December 15th. Um, it gives Daryl Morey more flexibility, gives him more options and just more teams and more and more players he can work with. Mm-hmm. Um do you have a scenario in your head that is like what you're mentally preparing for? Like, let's say that Dame Lillard is a thousand percent off the table. What's the, what's the plausible and very possible trade that you would be happy with in a return for Ben Simmons? So it, it really runs the gamut. Cause like, I, I uh, we, we know that there's a million yeah, options out there, but right. like, what, what do you have your heart set on right now? you know, from a professional standpoint, like two or three trades that are out there right now that you think would be the best case scenario and realistic case scenario, I guess. If there is any possibility that the Oklahoma City Thunder would listen on Shea Gilgis Alexander, Ooh. that would be a guy that would be very high on my list. Now, there's no okay. indication that they are. Uh, Zach Lowe, I think, had mentioned from ESPN, had mentioned over the summer that maybe they perhaps don't view him a- as a franchise guy or whatever. They did sign into an extension, so that might goes against that a little bit. But at the same time, that doesn't mean they won't trade him. Now, some people might say, "Well, why the hell would Oklahoma City do that?" If I'm if I'm going to get in Sam Presti's head, the man who has accumulated more draft picks than Sam Hickey could even dream of, you have a player of Ben Simmons who is still 25 years old, still under contract, and has star potential. Mm-hmm. Get him into Oklahoma City where no one cares and no one's watching, have him show out for the next year. And in a year from now, you could probably turn around and unload him for multiple picks. So it, it kind of goes to it. it and it, it, they have a very talented young point guard and Josh Giddy, who's also an Australian, by the way. Um, and it, you, have, you have to ask yourself too, if you're Sam Presti, do, do, do uh, Gildas Alexander and Giddy is that a combination that's going to work in the long term? And if the answer is no, perhaps this scenario works out better where you get Ben Simmons in there and either you keep him because he looks really good next to Giddy or you look to move him in a year because he will have, you know, you see what he's done. Like he got what, what, what Sam Presti did with Chris Paul, uh, what Sam Presti did with Al Horford. Like he's getting these players they're showing out while they're there, and then he's turning around and getting these, you know, uh, uh, extremely good assets for them. Mm-hmm. So uh, I could see that as a possibility. Another guy, uh, uh, there's the, the word is that the Pelicans are still trying to make the playoffs for some stupid reason. Um, <laughs> while Zion looks like he's not going to play a game this year, right? Uh, but like a, a guy like Brandon Ingram, I think is somewhat realistic. Okay, uh, and uh, I really like. You know, Brandon Ingram as a scorer, as a guy who can just get you a bucket, I really yeah. like. Um, a little bit of a weird fit, perhaps, with Tobias Harris and even maybe Joel Embiid because all three of those guys love them some mid-range jumpers, so maybe that's not the most perfect fit. But I'd be willing to take a look and see what that see what that 
you know, appears to be. Well, now, on, that, on that note real quick, mm -hmm. what about not just him fitting here, Ingram fitting here in Philadelphia, but Simmons fitting there sure. in, in New Orleans with, with Zion? Right. It, it, there is a world where it makes sense and a world where it doesn't. Because uh, uh, I could see those two actually being like a really good kind of pick and roll partnership. I could kind of see that being – because Zion is actually willing to shoot. And, and you know, he, he's not a terrible shooter when he's yeah. right, when he's healthy. And he's a really good scorer. So perhaps that balance, they could make that work. And if Zion elevates his game defensively, those two could be a really dangerous pair defensively. So, you know uh, – I would say that Ben Simmons just raises the floor more than Brandon Ingram does for them. Uh, for what they need a, a, a boost defensively, big time, and I think Ben Simmons could provide that. So that's where maybe that would make sense to them, okay. um, and maybe accelerate their timeline a little bit. Who knows? Um, and then the, the other thing, if we're talking about like right now, what I think is realistic right now, I still I, I've said this kind of I think all summer when we talk, Mark. If I have to take something, a Spurs package with you know, DeJounte Murray as a centerpiece. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the, DeJount you know, what's funny too, if you look at DeJounte Murray's numbers right now, they are basically Ben Simmons numbers with some three sprinkled in and better free throw shooting. Um, and he plays great defense. So I, I would certainly entertain a package that's, you know, Murray perhaps killed the Johnson. If it's that, I would be very interested in that. And I, I would do that right now. If the Spurs were interested, I don't know that they are uh, because Murray is still ascending offensively. So, I don't know that they would view Simmons as, you know, but I think what teams are going to try to, or what GMs are going to try to talk themselves into, or is that Ben Simmons was a number one overall pick. He was, you know, looked at as a possible generational talent. And if you're the Spurs, you think to yourself, Hmm, I get him in here with Greg Popovich and maybe Greg Popovich can get that out of him, can get that star potential, that guy out of him. And maybe he does, maybe he doesn't, but that might be a good swing for that organization because how good are they going to be with DeJounte Murray as their best player? Uh, mm -hmm. Probably not any, you know, probably no better than what they are. If you bring in Ben Simmons and Popovich can get more out of him, perhaps that elevates you. Maybe it doesn't, but maybe mm -hmm. it does. Um, and, uh, but all that to say too, like those are the ones that are kind of reasonable right now. I also don't think it's crazy to say, maybe you wait a little bit. Maybe you wait to see what happens with Bradley Beal and the Wizards. Um, he added some interesting quotes the other day talking yeah. about how, he wants to be a little selfish perhaps and, you know, is not <laughs> signing his extension yet. Those are some interesting comments. And that team is starting to really come back down to earth. Uh, you look at this, the Boston Celtics, they are kind of a mess. I mean, they beat the Bucks the other night, but there's still, that's a pretty messy situation. Mm -hmm. Perhaps Jalen Brown becomes available at some point. So I don't think it's necessarily the worst strategy to wait until closer to the deadline to see if some of these bigger fish come loose. But again, if a good deal comes along now, certainly you'll, you'll explore it and possibly take it. Yeah, I think one of the most important things to come out of all this right now is that Daryl Morey is basically having the whole idea, the whole plan, playing into his plan, which is, oh, look, all of a sudden these teams are calling me about Ben Simmons. How about this, huh? Uh, so I love that. Uh, last one I just want to throw to you. You mentioned Bradley Beal, which is one that I'd be in favor of. Uh, a little bit of a volume shooter, though. 19 shots a game is pretty much what he's averaging right now uh, for around 21 points a game. But uh, Sacramento Kings, we've talked about Buddy Heald before. We've talked about Halliburton before. We've talked about De'Aaron Fox before. The, first of all, overall, that trade package or, you know, some a combo of that. And also De'Aaron Fox right now versus Tyrese Maxey. Similar players, similar mm -hmm. styles. Maxey grows into that eventually. Where do you have that at? Yeah, I mean, I can tell you from people I've talked to, I, I don't think the Sixers really have any interest in De'Aaron Fox. I don't think it's a guy that they view as – a player that they would move for Ben Simmons. Mm. Um, and I think part of it, I mean, part of it is just, they don't see that value. Like they value Simmons more than Fox. Okay. The other part of it is I, I think you're hitting that nail on the head where Maxi is sort of in that mold, but I, I think Maxi going to be better. Quite frankly, mm. I think Maxi already is showing growth as a shooter. And I think Maxi is already a better defender than De'Aaron Fox is. Like I, I flat out, um, De'Aaron Fox, no question, is an explosive player, is an exciting player. Last year, came really close to making an all-star team. He's looked bad this year. I mean, he's looked really bad. Um, and again, he doesn't is not a good defender. And yeah, if I had my choice right now between those two guys, I, I'm picking Tyrese Maxey. I love so it. That's why it's to it. me, I, I don't think that that makes sense. Like I, I know for like you know 
from people I've talked to, I know that they're not really interested in De'Aaron Fox. And I think they're right to not be interested um, in De'Aaron Fox. I don't think that's a guy that I, I, I would entertain. Now, again, if it gets to the point where we get closer to the trade deadline and, you know, none of these big fish, none of that's coming to fruition and none of these big deals that you want, but the Sixers are really competitive and they might have a shot, you know, to, 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 to take one of the higher seeds and maybe make a run. And you feel like, all right, we have to do something. We have to make some type of move to improve this team and not just have Ben Simmons rotting, uh, sitting on the sideline. If you look at Sacramento and, you know, Harrison Barnes, Buddy Heald, I don't love that. Mm -hmm. But I think that makes them – I think that would make the Sixers a better team. I, yeah. I do. It's certainly um, more deep, I, yeah. Yeah, and I think Buddy Heald is actually an improved player. I think he's – I think he, he's looked pretty good this year. And uh, you throw him in the mix – here with Joel Embiid, that really intrigued. The guy takes 10 threes a game. The Sixers need a guy who wants <laughs> yep. to take 10 threes right. a game. Yeah, um, really. That's a great thing that they that they, that they they could use. Um, and then a guy like Harrison Barnes is having a great season. Um, and he's a more willing three-point shooter than, say, a Tobias Harris. So mm. to have those two guys, I think, could make you a better basketball team. Now, that to me, that's like a – again, if we have nothing else, if there's nothing else out on the table – and we just need something to try to improve this team right now. That package with picks is something I might consider. 